Hello YouTube Divers, this is WaterEye122, and I want to welcome you all to another episode of the podcast for high school sports all across Western North Carolina. And today we are going to be recapping Brevard's heartbreaking loss to the Irwin Warriors last night, 28-21. Now, if you all remember in my previous video, which was uploaded last night... Um, I recorded, I recorded halftime, I, reco I recorded Irwin's band, and they did a really good job. But today, I'm going to be talking some football here with you guys, so let's get started. So, the game got off to a very horrible start for Brevard. Irwin had, Irwin took their opening drive, and they scored, they scored a touchdown, making Irwin the first team to score on Brevard in the first quarter of this season. After Brevard held their previous two opponents, Robbinsville and Asheville, scoreless in the first quarter. And then things could not have gotten worse for Brevard. They fumbled the ball on their ensuing drive, and Irwin turned that into points, making the lead 14 to nothing. And that would be your halftime score. I mean, that touchdown also happened in the first quarter, but no one scored in the second quarter. And then Irwin's band performed. I got some concessions, and then I went back to the stands. And Brevard had an impressive opening drive to start the third quarter. They scored a touchdown, capped off from a touchdown throw from quarterback Joe Powell to wide receiver Gannon Hemphill. That was Gannon Hemphill's first touchdown of the season, and, you know, it put us on the board. We were we were up fourteen to seven. No, we were down fourteen to seven rather. And then we held Irwin scoreless again in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, however, Irwin did score another touchdown, thanks to the combination of quarterback Iggy Welsh and wide receiver Dylan Davidson. I tell you, those that is a killer wide receiver duo, QB wide receiver duo right there. But Brevard answered right away thanks to a Joe Powell rushing touchdown up the middle. The band section was on the complete other side of the field, though, so I don't know exactly how far he ran, but my guess is probably about uh, 10 or 15 yards or something like that. But Powell scampered into the end zone, which cut the lead down to 21-14. Then we held Irwin on a three and out, and then Brevard... Brevard came back with an impressive drive down the field, capped off from another passing touchdown from quarterback Joe Powell to wide receiver Jalen Carver, which tied the game. Brevard would hold Irwin three and out again, and Brevard would make the moat. Brevard got the ball back with about, um, I want to say about two and a half minutes left. I believe that was right. Um... And Brevard had a third down and 12 deep in their own territory. There was a bad snap. Joe Powell could not corral it. It was recovered by Irwin. Then a couple of plays later, quarterback Iggy Welsh ran it in for the touchdown. That won the game for Irwin. Warriors win it 28-21. A strong Brevard comeback just fell short. And that was right after an inter a phenomenal interception by Kyle Lovett. Speaking of Kyle Levitt, let's talk about Kyle Levitt. In the previous two games, he has had back-to-back 110-plus -back yard games. He had 114 receiving yards against Robbinsville, and he had a 118 receiving yards against Asheville. Um, unfortunately, the stats are not up on max preps as of right now, but guaranteed from all the big catches he's had in that game, I wouldn't be surprised if he crossed the 110-yard mark for a third straight game, or at the very least, the 100-yard receiving mark, which would put his total all the way up, which would put his total all the way up to 232 receiving yards in the previous two games, and if he had, I don't know, maybe 105 yards, then he would... Then he would have liked. Then he would have had. 
I'm trying to do the math here, folks. Well, biased on that, just, you get the point. Kyle Lovett has been an absolute monster these past three games. He has made some incredible catches. He was re he caught the lateral pass that helped us beat Robbinsville. He made a one he made a fantastic one-handed yard catch and one-handed catch against Asheville. And of course, he caught the 63-yard touchdown against Robbinsville that made us lead at halftime. And of course, he had some great catches against Irwin. But one thing that I can say that Brevard did very well for most of the game, rather, is that they ran the ball very well. They ran the ball more than they have had the entire season. And even the defense was starting to get better. As I've said in a deleted video of mine, Brevard, Brevard basically was... I don't want to say they were bad, because I don't want to talk trash about my team. But... I just want to say that, you know, they they weren't very good at stopping the run. We allowed 208 yards to just one running back alone from Robbinsville. That was uh, Color Adams. And then we allowed a lot of we lo we allowed a lot of big runs from Asheville last week. And then we even yeah, we did our fair share against Irwin. But in the first quarter, it looked like Neverbard's rushing defense was just back to the way it was last week, but they got better over through time. I mean, over time as the game went on, so I'm willing to forgive them there. And Brevard ran and on offense. Brevard ran the ball pretty well, and that was without ru star running back Garrett Swicegood, who was out due to COVID. And of course, senior running back Nathan Stockton, who was out because he was recovering from a. Uh, injury that he had last season so all three so we had three running backs out there th all three of our junior running backs Nashawn Griffin Caleb Jenkins and Jacob Stockton who in my opinion Stockton had the most yards out of the three although Nashawn Griffin was also pretty good running the ball but the main issue here is the offensive line the offensive line was horrid less in mean, this past week and again i'm not a coach and i don't know exactly what they were going for but joe powell was running for his life on some plays i mean we allowed five sacks against Asheville. i don't know how many sacks we allowed against Irwin, but i counted like maybe five or six and coupled with the one sack that we gave up against robbinsville our offensive line is so far according to my calculations has allowed 12 sacks these past three games. That that has got to that has got to slow down. We can't let Joe Powell run for his life. The good news is that next week Brevard will take on the 1A team Andrews. Now, Andrews is no slouch. They just beat the number one team in 1A West, the Mitchell Mountaineers, 26-14, to to improve their record to 3-0. Now, if Brevard wants a shot of beating Andrews, the offensive line has to be better. Kyle Lovett has to expose Andrews' secondary. Our receivers have, our receivers have to play their part. we got to run the ball, maybe not up the middle, but... We've got to run the ball more. Drain the clock. It'll tire their defense out. It happens every time. With the amount of running backs that we have, I don't see why this team should average like four, four point five yards per care yards a game. This is a team built to win, and they went four and three last year just a lot of juniors and sophomores and a few seniors now it's basically the same group from last season's team on the field and you're off and you're off to a one and two start now Brevard is not out of the race just yet it's still really early in the season we still got a lot of games to go before the playoffs but if Brevard wants a shot of making the playoffs They've got to get. 
they've got to find some consistency. One thing, one of my biggest issues with this team is consistency. They are so inconsistent. Like they were great against Robbinsville, then they laid an egg against Asheville, and then they were kind of meh against Irwin. And I say meh because we started off bad, and then we got really good, and then we couldn't finish the game. So, with that said, hopefully Brevard will be consistent because, as I've talked about numerous times, this conference, the Mountain Hill, the Mountain Foothill Seven, is anything but friendly. You have the Tough Chase Trojans, you got Hendersonville to worry about, you got Polk County to worry about. That's three potential playoff contenders right there. And then R S Central is on the rise, and then R S Central is of course on the rise. So you gotta worry about them. So yeah, this is not going to be an easy conference slate for Brevard. So they need to win some games right now. They need to beat Andrews next week to gain some momentum going into conference play. Or otherwise, this will be a down year for the Blue Devil for Blue Devil Nation, which I surely hope does not happen. But overall, I think Brevard played a decent game. They came back. They were, we were with them for like the entire second half, and we almost won. But, you know, another game, another week. Just get back on your feet, and we'll be fine. Hopefully, we'll be getting back Eric Swice good next week. If not, then that's okay, because we've already they've already shown me what they can do with ju with three junior running backs and of course a rushing QB like Joe Powell. By the way, Joe Powell he was pretty freaking good as a runner, in my opinion. So with that said, thank you so much for watching, my fellow YouTube divers. This is Water Dive 122 signing out. Ready to dive and more fun on YouTube. Thanks for watching.